As quilters, we love having a few secret tips tucked away in our toolbox in order to make a beautiful quilt when we need it and quickly and fast and easily. And that's what this is all about. I have a couple secret techniques I want to share with you and you're going to love how fast this quilt goes together. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise and check this quilt out behind me. Oh my goodness, there's two special techniques that I'm applying to this that you will not believe how easy it's going to be. And yes, there's a pattern and yes, it's on sale and yes, I have it here ready for you to go. I can't wait for you to see this. I want to show these techniques to you and just how easy they are to apply to any of your quilts. All right, let's go ahead and get started. This is what's going to adjust each row of charm squares so they don't line up perfectly. This is a great and easy way and a fast way. You just take a few charm squares, cut them in half, put them on every other row, and there we go. So there are a couple way, a couple things that I want to show you about this quilt. So let me go ahead and get the other version so you can see that. I love the contrast between these two quilts, where this is burgundy, orange, gold, and some light yellows and pink and a bit of, of purple, kind of a dark fuchsia. This is an overall dark, very saturated color quilt, but I have some very high contrast stripes in here that not only contrast because of the black and white, but because of those, those stark, narrow lines. They really pop in this quilt. Well, check this one out. You know, I can't tell which one of these I like the best because they're they're both wonderful. This I did with all low volume fabric. And how fun is that? You can play with so many different fabrics this way and put all kinds of low volume in here. But my strips are left over from some K-Facet layer cakes. And so I had to cut them off for a project I was working on and layer cakes of 10 inches, all I had to do was cut them in half and I had my five inch and I just placed these throughout the quilt. And this looks wonderful. Now, I did a little different on the edges for this one. They weren't all exactly a half a charm square. Some of them were more, some were less. And the reason for that is when I did this red one, and put this half here, that means I need to cut the half on this side. And you'll notice that each row, where are they, has these pieces that I need to cut off. And instead what I did here is I would just kind of add squares here and there in varying widths in order to get a different look. Where is it? Here it is. Now, I did start with a half a charm. That, well, that's actually bigger than a half charm. This is narrower. This is sort of in between. This is narrow. So I just kind of mixed it up because then it doesn't look like such a precise pattern. Whereas this, you see those half blocks. They're exactly the same size, which is fine. But when I think of a low volume quilt, I think more of a scrappy quilt. So I really like the idea of changing up these edges. And that's just a matter of running them together. And then when you get to the other side, you will have a bit of trimming, but not too much. And if you find one row is particularly longer than another, then, you know, squeeze a little piece in here like I did, whatever you need to do. But these are a pair of wonderful quilts. Here's a view of the two quilts that I finished initially with these narrow strips. And I just want to show you how random the strips are. And you can use as many or as few as you want. So I use predominantly three per row in each of these, but I have a couple rows where I only used two. And over here I have a row that I put in four. So it's just a matter of balancing. I probably could have used another one down in this corner, but overall, I think it really looks great. I love the accents. It just gives a totally different look to the quilt, and it is a lot of fun to make. I hope this gives you some great ideas for making your own quilt. So let me go ahead and put this out. Oh, there is one other thing I need to show you before we get started. 
one moment. If you've watched my videos before, you know I get my quarterly Fat Quarter bundle from the Fat Quarter Shop. And look what came in the mail. And I've been holding it for a couple days just so I can show this to you. I have an idea what's in here, but you know, until you see and touch the fabric, you don't really know. Ooh, here's some pretty ones. And I wanted to open this just in case there are some fabrics in here I want to use in today's quilt. Now, this is called the Earth Meets Sky Batik. So they're the Hoffman Valley Batiks. And let's see, there it is. This is my little card that shows me all the fabric. So if there's one in particular that I want, oh, isn't that pretty? I would go ahead and, and order yardage, like if I wanted to use it for the backing or a border or something like that. So this is really handy to have. But let me just show you some of these fabrics. There are 12 fat quarters that come in each pack each month. And they're just beautiful. They're always a coordinated set. And there'll be patterns that fabric pattern or designs that have been printed before in other colors, but then they take the top favorite designs that are out there and replicate them in various color schemes. So every month it's a completely different collection of fabrics, both in color and design, which is great. Now, because there's 12 fat quarters, that means there's three yards here. You can make a quilt with just this fabric. So if you like doing fat quarter quilts and want to make a quilt strictly out of this fabric, look, you've got your darks, you have some mediums, you have your lights. So you have everything that you need right here to make a quilt. So let me just give you a quick look of uh, some of these fabrics. Oh, they're beautiful. There's this great evergreen in here, this sort of blue spruce evergreen color that I like. There, there it is there. And, you know, it's interesting that there's a lot of brown here because brown is a color I struggle with. And I'm never quite sure what to put it with. But everything that I see when I look, you know, at the color wheel, because brown falls in the orange uh, group of colors, that I like this. Oh, my goodness. I really see, I love that background. That's a really dark teal. But a bright blue would work well, too. So when I'm checking out the color wheel and I always see blues mixed in with the brown fabrics and so that's that's what I need to do because I do have a group of, of brown fabrics that I need to use and with fall coming that would be perfect look at this oh my god I love ferns I love foliage and the blues on top of these colors oh isn't that fabulous I love that piece and this is pretty it's just a sweet little little print but see how that brings a lot of color into all these and and it brightens this quilt up it lets you see these lighter pieces or, or lighter uh, specks of color throughout all the different blocks and then of course this one is pretty so that's my new uh my new bundle and we'll be dealing with this soon but what i would like to know what do you do with brown fabric what do you mix it with what kind of patterns do you use and just give me some ideas because I'm not quite sure. You may remember when I first started doing my videos, my problem color was purple. Oh my goodness, I certainly got over that. And I have made a bunch of purple quilts and I don't think there's a quilt I make that doesn't have a bit of purple in it. So now I just need to get more comfortable with brown and I'll be good to go. So be sure and give me your input. I need to hear about this. But now it's time to get started on our quilt. It's time to start pulling out some charm squares. So I have my charm square bins and I have bits and pieces sort of left on top. In the last couple of weeks, I've made a lot of charm square quilts and have a lot of pieces that have collected. Plus I have some short strips that were left over from projects that I can get a couple charm squares out of. So I just need to see what I have and get an idea of what colors I'm going with. So I do want some bright colors. And actually, let's see, some of these are in this category that they need to be cut. There's some fun uh, tulip pink fabrics. And then I have, yes, I really like the, uh, the dots. And then I have 
um, a number of different batiks. Let's see what I have here. Here's some pretty ones. Oh, these are actually strips. Okay, not all of these are five inches, but look at this. I love this fabric. This fabric goes way back, and I enjoyed it so much, I bought yards of this. And I still use it. I'm getting down to the end, but it's a, a beautiful multi-background in blues and teals and greens and pink, purple, I mean, everything. But it has this fabulous floral print on top of it and this is great for so many different uh, quilts. You can put so many colors together with this. So that's a fun one to use and I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with that. So I have these and there are a bunch here that I've used recently. The Anna Marie fabrics right in here. These are wonderful. Then I have some batiks, and this is from the panel quilt that I did. Oh, look at these. Look at all these colors. So I can go through and pull a lot of this. So I am going to go scrappy, and I don't know if I'm going to end up with a particular color group or not, because there's just so much in here. And here's some more of the Anna Marie, and then here are the uh, actually, this goes back to, I think it's Sincerely Yours, a, a Valentine collection that was real pretty. And, you know, a block like this, let me show you this print. Have you seen this print? It's out there in a couple different colors. What's fun is, I think it's the, um, the story Little Women. And there's all different chapters throughout the, the fabric. And it's, it's just a great piece. And it's a lot of fun in a quilt. And it's sort of like a background fabric because it doesn't have a lot of contrast. So you can use it between blocks to kind of tone things down. So that's a fun one there. Plus, I have all the leftover fabrics that I cut for that last quilt, the low volume charm square quilt that I did. And it was the nine patch. And there's, there's some great fabrics in here. So I have enough to, you know, sprinkle in some lighter ones. There are some darks. But one thing I did, well, here they are, that I want to show you. If you remember when we were cutting those fat quarters for that previous quilt, and I showed you how I lay my fat quarter, and I'll cut it, and I'll have strips left over at each end. And I'll cut the selvages off, and I'll save those strips. And I said, hang on to them because I'm going to show you what we can do with these strips. Well, this is the quilt we're going to use them on. And you saw how those little strips work in the quilt. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll go through these and separate them. You notice I have dark, medium, and light, but I only want darks and lights because I want to create contrast wherever these fall between the charms. And if I use mediums, they're going to sort of get muddled in there. So let me go ahead and pull some fabrics. And, oh, I have a couple more I need to show you. When you're filling up a quilt with a lot of busy fabrics, particularly in charms, that they're going to all be compact together and just smushed into a, a what do I want to say, a, an incredible group of busy fabrics, you've got to figure out a way to tone it down. Part of it is incorporating solids. Now, seldom do I use just a straight up solid. These are pretty much solid fabrics, but notice they have the speckle. And that just is a fun little look that adds some interest when you're up close. But from a distance, these really look like a solid. So that's going to work as far as a charm square, mixing it in with all the others and breaking up the uh, you know the busy areas. If there's too many busy prints next to each other, I can incorporate these and that'll work out great. So that's something else I'm going to use. And then I have this group of batiks and they're pretty much monochromatic. Some of them do have you know different colors in here just for you know contrast purposes. But I really like some of these fun prints and these will work out really well 
against a lot of these colors because these colors are going to have some really bold and bright prints that we need to sort of manage throughout the quilt. So let me go ahead and pull together what I think is going to work best and then we'll get started on this quilt. It's going to be great fun. I definitely found some wonderful fabrics. These charm squares will work ter terrific. What I did is I started by taking three of each and that way I thought you know, once I reach approximately 30 different fabrics, then I'll have 90 total, which will be enough for this particular quilt. Well, right now I have close to 70 fabrics, so um, I'll use 70 fabrics, plus I'll pick a couple of my favorites that I'll, I'll mix in. So you can see I have pinks and reds, I have blues and purples, and light blues and teals greens, yellow and orange, and then these are my multicolors. And they just sort of fit in wherever. And I really like how this works. So I decided not to do this because I had so many prints. I just, I didn't want to cut into a bunch more fabric when I had plenty here that I could use, which is the same for these batiks. So I'm setting those aside for another day. But now what I have to do is consider what I'm going to put here. Now, as I showed you, we had these left over when we cut our fat quarters. And my original intent was to gather these all up and place them between the charm squares as I'm piecing the quilt to put my random strips. Now, what I would do is go with the darkest and the lightest. I wouldn't want to use a medium because it's not going to stand out enough. Now a light one and a dark one will stand out. But my problem is there is so much going on in this quilt. I don't want another whole element to be really busy. Whatever these stripes are going to be, they're going to have to tie things together and be sort of the restful place for your eyes because this is going to be a whirlwind of a quilt. So I started pulling out fabrics and I really like this when I pulled it out. It's a sort of a, a watercolor wash kind of fabric. It has greens and blues, turquoise, light greens, all different colors. So this color works really good and sprinkling some of this within the quilt would look great between all these blocks because there's a lot of different greens and shades of green in here. The only thing though is if I put this throughout the quilt, this is going to become a dominant color and I don't want a color to be dominant. This is a scrappy quilt and I want lots of colors in there. So then I found this one and what I liked about this is it has the creamy background so it's going to be light enough to contrast against a lot of these uh, charms, but also it has yellow, green, and gold. And so these colors would work really well in here. So that was an option. And I, I kept going. I thought, what else do I have? And I had this blue one but it fades out too much and it, it would almost, it would be washed out. So I wasn't going to go there and I pulled this one out and while this would look okay, there's, there's too much blue to go with just blue. There's a little bit of green, but there needs to be other colors than just the blue. So I didn't feel good about that one. Now this one I pulled out and I liked this because it has the creamy background, but it has the dots in all different colors. And of course, you know, I love my dots. So this I thought would be a viable candidate. And I'm back to this. So it's these low volumes that I think are really going to be the best accent in this quilt. So I'm going to decide which of these I'm going to use. I'll start pulling my blocks together and show you how to lay out the quilt. And by then I'll have made a decision. We'll cut this down into strips and then see where we go from there. I want to show you a couple quilts to give you an idea of how the offset seam works when the quilt is finished. So this is just a regular 
uh, charm square quilt. Everything is put together in rows. The quilting is done along the seams with a quarter inch in both directions on each side. And you can tell it's all nice and square and it looks wonderful. And don't you love that fantastic binding? I think it's great. And of course, there's this sort of a lime green back. So this was some great fabric I had a while back, and I absolutely, I think it's called Paradise. I always called it Citrus, because all I could think of were lemons and limes and grapefruits and sour oranges and key limes and all those wonderful tropical fruits. So you, you get the picture here of what we have. Now, what I want you to see is the difference here. And you'll notice that these corners are not lining up. This is also a fun way to do the quilt because on this one, when we quilted it, we followed the lines. It was a grid. The quilt itself was laid out in a grid. This is not. So you can quilt just along the lateral lines if you want, or you can do this diagonal. And that worked out really well here. But what I want to show you is what the edges of the quilt looks like. And I just put a pretty little yellow gingham on the back of this. But look at how we have the alternating full charm and a half going all the way along the edge. And that's what offsets everything so that we don't have to match up our seams. And you'll see the same thing here. It works the same way. So that's what we're going to do with this quilt. But in addition to this, we're going to also add some extra strips. And those accent strips are just going to bring a lot more interest. I'll do a quick picture and show you how these turned out. I think they're adorable. I love them. So let me go ahead and get that photo up, and then we'll get started on making the actual quilt we're here to do today. Here are the two baby quilts that you can see the difference side by side. This is a regular grid. They're all sewed in nice, even rows. This one has the half charm at the beginning, and you'll see how there's no matching seams here. This is what we're going to be working on today, and we're going to do it with a different group of fabric, so it'll have a completely different look, and we're going to add some narrow strips in here that'll really change it up and create some great visual interest and a bit of contrast. So let's go ahead and get started on today's quilt, and I'll show you how that's going to go together. This is how I'm laying this quilt out in order to sew it. And it just makes it easier for me to place everything so I know what it's going to look like overall. So I have my eight charm squares by 10 rows, and I just overlap them because I just want to get an idea of the colors. Now, I need to do my half blocks on the side. So these are approximately half of a charm square. Mostly what they are are uh, scraps from other projects and I'm just grabbing them because the colors worked. And so I'm going to tuck these in here because as I go through, let's see, blue, this will go into the green one. As I go through, I will piece these alongside just like this. So that's the first thing. And then once that's in place, then I'm going to start putting in my narrow strips. And I did decide to go with the dots, and I have at least 30. I think I ended up with maybe 40 of these so that I have plenty to distribute throughout the quilt. So I'm just going to start placing them. And because these are light, I'm going to want to put them closer to dark fabrics. You can see if I put it right next to this light one, it's not going to stand out so much. But if I have it here, it, it's going to definitely um, really make a statement. But of course, I'm placing them this way. So what I do is I just fold this in half and I start tucking. So my first choices will be wherever there are two dark blocks side by side that I can put these between just like this, and I will just sort of randomly place them throughout. There's absolutely no rule other than just getting a bit of balance so that you feel like it's kind of um, 
spread out. You don't want it heavy in one area and not enough somewhere else. Let's see, put them in here. And I want to put one up here. Let's see. I'm not quite sure. I think I want to do this one. And then this one, this one, I like this. So that's all I'm going to do. Let me go ahead and place these in and I'll show you when I'm finished. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew this quilt together. I took two rows off the bottom and sewed them together. So I want to show those two. I'm just going to set this on top to kind of keep everything in order while I show you these two rows. So this is the bottom row or top. It depends, you know, on how you do it. But the way that I had these laid out is the bottom row was actually the closest, um, easiest to pull up because the others were all buried underneath. So with that being said, and I just want to kind of show you here, I put these, I want to make sure I can get this all in the camera. I, I put these together and I, this is going to have the, the half charm at the, uh, at the end because I do it alternating. So the even rows will each have this half charm at the beginning. And then I did the row above that. So when this goes together, this block will come all the way out. And you see now how everything is offsetting. And you can kind of, I want to pull this out and make sure, yes, we can see all that. You'll notice how everything is staggered. And that means that we're not going to have any matching seams. So I just press everything to one side and then when I sew my strips together they're all just going to sew easily without worrying about matching, nesting seams, seam allowances flipping because I'll sew in the direction that the seam allowance is pressed. Now there's one other thing I want to show you here. I did mention that I keep a stack of five inch but not big enough for a charm square so these are the narrow ends when i'm cutting my fat quarters and so i pulled a couple pieces because something else that we can do here in this space ordinarily what i would do is i'd come in and i'd just cut that off but i can add another piece of fabric just to fill it out in order to add that extra inches you know the extra couple inches to the size of the quilt so I have a piece of the same fabric, so that would blend very easily. I have another orange with some pink, which would work out really well there too. And then this one. And you know, I think I'm going to go with that just because I love polka dots. And it's just kind of a, a fun thing to have on the outskirts of the quilt. I don't always like those big, bold polka dots in the middle of the quilt unless I have a lot of them spread about, which I don't. So I'm going to keep that to the end. So I'm going to sew this here and add it to that strip. And then as I go through, when I'm adding on this end, then I may look and see what I have to add on the other end. So that'll make my quilt probably maybe another two inches wider. And more quilt is always better. So I'm going to go ahead and get this pieced and show you what it looks like. And the quilt top is all pieced. I think it looks wonderful. I just want to show you how all these colors work together and where these strips landed. I started out with two to three in my preliminary layout. And as I sewed things together and put everything in its place, I decided maybe another one here or maybe move this one there. So there were a few adjustments along the way, which is to be expected. But I think it turned out very, very well. I love it. And of course, all these beautiful bright colors. That just that just makes a fun quilt in my mind. It's definitely scrappy. Um, I think just about every fabric in here is only in once. There may be a couple that I duplicated just because they're favorites or they're colors that I really wanted to include. So you can tell by the straight edge, that's the top. And this is the bottom, or vice versa. Where'd it go? Right here. So these are straight edges. Now, what I want to show you is along the sides. Because remember, by adding those offsets, let me just straighten this out. 
we're going to have a bit of variance in our our edges. So for example, right here on this corner, for the most part these are all straight, but I still want to double check. Let me go ahead and get this in the center. Because what I want to do is lay my ruler across. Now you can put this here and line it up with your grid. You choose a line. Hold on, I'm just going to lift this quilt up. It wants to fall off the table. There we go. And you want to just line this up and see how how straight it is. A lot of times what I'll do is I will start in the middle and I will just lay my ruler down because it'll cover a, a longer distance and I can just take a look and see if this and this are on the edge, does everything fall in place? And in this case it does, which is what I would expect because these were all sewn together with this edge being straight. I didn't end up with lots of pieces um, extending out, except up here I did because I wanted to add a little more space on the other end so as not to cut that piece too short. So what I'm going to do is making sure that my quilt is laying nice and flat. I'm not going to use the grid for this except for this side. Let me just put this side here and I'm kind of balancing this holding it so it doesn't fall off the table. It wants to just keep sliding. So I'm going to align myself with the top and I want to make sure these lines are following my seams, which shows me that things are straight, which is terrific. And then I'm just going to cut this piece off right there. And there we are. So we have a good corner. I'm going to do the same thing here. So this I know is already straight on this side. And I'm going to let this run across here. I want to make sure that the fabric isn't pulling in any particular direction, that it's laying nice and flat. So this side is along the line. This looks good. I'm going to put this along a line on my grid to sort of gauge it, put it in the right place, make sure it's at 90 degrees, and then I'm going to make sure that these lines are all vertical with the seams so that this lines up well, this lines up, everything looks terrific. So I can go ahead and cut that off and get a nice square. So what I'm doing is by lining it up on the grid, overlapping my ruler onto that grid, my ruler is now square in perspective to the grid itself, to all the, the line markings. And because the quilt is generally laid out in that, that particular manner, by lining it up over here and putting this on my quilt on the seam, then I know I'm in a good place. And I just kind of roll this up, slide it up where I need to be, and cut it off. So that works out really well. Now, the big thing we need to concern ourselves with is the other side. I'm going to fold this up so it doesn't hang off the tail. I have three nice square sides and I need to do the fourth. And this last side is the one with all the overhang pieces where as we added at the beginning of the strip the half charm in order to offset our seams plus the additional strips we added in here this created some variances and I did add a few extra pieces here and there just to try and balance it out. Now if I were to just go ahead and straighten this out like this and run my ruler across it could be a bit challenging and I don't want to get anything twisted or turned. So I'm going to rely on the straight edges that I already have. I'm going to take the other end that is already trimmed. Let me just fold this out and I'm just going to fold it in thirds. It doesn't matter whether it's thirds or quarters, just so you have a manageable distance to work with and you want to fold it along the same spot in the seam. So I have about an inch there and 
kind of get that to lay flat. And then I'm going to put this right on top. And what I want to do is make sure that this edge is straight, that all these edges here line up perfectly. Now, when I do this, notice how these seams line up nice and straight. So I'm good trimming over here. What I'm going to do, though, is turn it over and just see where I am. And you can see where the long pieces are overhanging. And this was my short piece right here. And I can see that this needs to come over just a little bit. There we go. I don't want it to be twisted. Okay. And so what I'm going to do now is cut across here. And I'm going to line my quilt up. Let me just put this in place with the grid. So I have it on this line up here. Again, I want these edges nice and even. I'm going to put this line up here and this one down here. So I'm nice and straight. It looks a little bit, there we go. Uh, sorry, I was a little bit crooked. And there, okay, now we're good. And so I'm going to then just cut across here at this shortest point. And I'll just put my ruler down, make sure everything's laying flat. I don't want to have anything folded over or any tucks in there. And I'm going to put my ruler right on this spot. And I'm going to use the grid of my mat. And so that looks really good right there. And I have this point. It looks like everything else works well. And so I'm just going to cut these pieces off right here. Now, as I open this, I'm just going to double check and make sure that there aren't any pieces that I didn't, oh, there's one that I missed there. So now what I'm going to do is come back and square it up. So that gave me basically the dimension or the, the straight-ish side that I needed. Now what I need to do is get this corner and see how that's kind of swinging out that way it's not a happy camper now a lot of times I'll just use my 24 inch ruler like this but I recently bought a new mat and it'll be going on this table as soon as this video is over but you can see all the you know way it's marked up I've been using this for years and it's taken a beating and it's time for a new mat and it's bigger that's what I'm so excited about so I have my 24 inch ruler here, which works out pretty good, but I'm going to also now try my 36 inch. Since I'm getting a larger mat, I bought a larger ruler and this is pretty darn exciting. So I'm going to start here and bring it to this point. Now I'm just going to slide my ruler over to the edge and I'm going to run it off a little bit just so I can line up my seams with my fabric and make sure every, whoop, there's a little piece there, that everything is nice and even. And I'm just going to come and trim this off. Just a little bit, that's all we needed. And so now it's nice and straight. And we're good to go. Now, one thing to, to consider, I want to show you on this first side. This is the, the beginning side of each row. So these are all nice and straight and square and they look beautiful. As I was sewing and I had some excess on the end of some of the rows, I decided to go ahead and add some extra pieces just to fill it in and even it up so I didn't have to, you know, cut too much off. And so I just started grabbing some scraps. And I noticed not all of them were perfectly square. See how this one's just a little bit wonky? This one is a little bit too. I'm not worried about that because that's pretty minimal. It's just a matter of, you know, it filling in the edge so that I can get a good straight cut and finish my quilt. Now, one thing that you, you want to understand about quilting, 
When you show someone your quilt, they are going to see it in its entirety and they're going to focus on the center or at whatever the design element is, which is usually somewhere in the middle of the quilt. So anything around the edges doesn't really get picked up visually and it just looks like the background and that's fine. If they do look at the edge, you want them to see the binding. So you put on an awesome binding because by the time they get out here, they're looking at that binding going, oh, wow, isn't that awesome? And nobody sees that anything isn't square here. And quite honestly, unless they're an engineer or a quilter who works with straight lines, nobody's going to notice. And I say all this because I don't want you to worry about those details. They really don't matter in the long run. What's important is that you have a quilt that you love, you finish it, and you get to share it. And what better than that? I think that's a fantastic accomplishment. Here it is. Now, I do want to get a picture of this uh, before doing the trimming and after so you can see what this looks like. And here's the quilt before everything is trimmed off. You can see how along this edge, this is the final edge that I uh, need to trim because see how these rows are all ending at various lengths. And so I'm just going to come across, I'll find this looks like the shortest one here, and then I'll come across and trim everything and we'll have a nice square quilt. And you see down here I've got a little bit of the same with this block that needs to be trimmed off. So there we are. That's all there is to it. And then we have a finished quilt that looks gorgeous. Here's today's finished quilt top. Oh my goodness, there's so wonderful fabrics and colors in there and they just splash across this quilt in glorious color. I love it. I really enjoy how this has turned out. And you can see the narrow strips along each edge and the the pattern itself really has only the half edge strips on one side but since I had some extra you know length as I was adding in the other pieces I just filled it in and that's certainly something that's very easy to do if you choose to do so but this is a pattern that's available and it's available at a great price it's new and I'm excited to share it with you I'm so glad you're here today thanks so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this quilt and have a wonderful day as always it's a pleasure being here with you